the cylinder head temperature 46 on that one these are all in centigrade and 60 on that one so again you can see this side's running cooler uh, so that is something that means the carburation is different on both of them which is great because that's what we're going to go and try and fix now okay um, so today I'm going to look at the the carbs on my bike there's been some good feedback from the TZR forum saying the funny noise that I was hearing while I was riding the bike is actually down to an imbalance in the carburation so that's great that was the next thing I was going to do anyway the good news is there's nothing mechanical uh, that's a problem so what I've done is to have taken all the fairings off some of them came off easier than the others um, and then we're going to take a look at the carbs but first of all, I've just got to warm this bike up, so I'll be right back. Right, fuel on, choke on. One. Two. Oh, not quite. Let's try that again. Okay, so that's had a bit of warming up. Um, Got to keep blipping it or else you'll foul the plugs. Uh, so first thing I'm going to do is check the temperatures of the exhaust headers. And so the left pipe, 109. Sorry, that was the right pipe. The left pipe, 82. So there's definitely some difference between the carburation here um, and these bikes operate independent two independent engines running together in the same bike it's really weird but the jetting on this carb is completely different from the jetting on the carb the other side and yamaha made it that way i don't know why so what i'm going to do now it's warmed up um, let me just check the cylinder head temperature 46 on that one these are all in centigrade and 60 on that one so again you can see this side's running cooler uh, so that is something that means the carburation is different on both of them which is great because that's what we're going to go and try and fix now um, so i'm just going to do a compression test on it so hang on let me get the stuff to do that so i think i've got everything i need now um, this is the compression tester uh, that i am going to use um, looks like a compression tester so we'll use that um, first thing I need to get the plugs off this bike on both sides a little bit oily but it's only been idling so that's fine the other side of course you can't get at unless you take the tank off so you need a um, ring spanner to do this there you go that's off and again Bit of an oily plug, but it's only been sat at idle. So if we find the right insert, that looks like it. Um, I've not used this before, so let's give it a go. Uh, 
Um, what I'm not looking for is an absolute number. What I'm just looking for is a similarity in numbers. So are both numbers roughly the same? Um, and if they were high, then that would be great. Let me do this a slightly different way. Get this in because this thread's more precious first. So let's get this in first. Get that in nice. Probably doesn't have to be done up mad because when I put this end on it's going to go up I'll do so the ignition off and come out here should be able to just turn this over Let's just kick it and see what it gives us. Okay, so that stopped going up and that is telling us a compression of seven bar, which is 100 PSI. So that's good. Let's see what the other side can do. Might have to admit defeat and take the tank off, actually. <clears throat> Let's just do that. Okay. The essentials for getting a tank off. Piece of wood and an 8mm. So this piece of wood is... Uh, Yam I'll find the Yamaha part number for it. Um, but this is what you need for removing the tank. Place it under there. Then you can reach the fuel. Without trapping your hands. And also the vacuum hose as well. Okay. A little bit of wood's done its job, so it can stay down there. Get the tank out of the way. I still can't get to it. No, I can get to it. I can get to it through here. That's fine. Okay. Now, hopefully the engine hasn't cooled down too much, uh, but we will give this a go. So we've got 7 bar, 100 PSI on the right side. And we'll see what we get on the left side. Okay. So we're a little bit under, it might not be fully tight, let me try, and it's probably cooled down by the time I've mucked about doing all this anyway. Oh there you go, yes it goes up to 7 and then drops down so I suspect I've not got this fully tight but I'm not worried about it, the important thing is to make sure that there is compression reasonable compression in both cylinders. I'm happy I've got that. So the next thing to do is to put the fuel tank back on and we will warm up the bike again because it's gone quite cold now and start looking at tuning the carbs individually. Okay, the tank's back on so let's warm it up again. Fuel back on. What I'm going to do is set the idle a bit higher so we can run each cylinder independently.
perfect. What I'm doing there is just checking the pulses, the strength of the pulses to make sure that both, both cylinders are doing the same amount of work. If you've got one that's really banging and the other one is then they're not doing the right amount of work. So let's warm this up a bit more and get the idle set to about two and a half, three thousand with both pipes working towards that goal. Okay, so to do this, the uh, engine's nice and warm now. Um, I'm going to use a crocodile clip and take out the right hand side plug so I can run the engine on one cylinder only. It's quite warm. Right. Then I'm just going to clip that against the frame there. You have to come in and have a look at that. And see, so I've just clipped that in there so that can still spark. That's not going to cause a problem for the coils or the CDI. Um, so that will still spark. But with no spark plug, there'll be no compression. Therefore, nothing's going to be going on with this side. So let's start it up and have a look. And what we're going to be doing <coughs> is tuning this carburetor. Uh, right, so on this carburetor, here is the idle adjustment, which I've set up to about 3000 RPM. And then right in here, you can see this little guy here is the air screw adjuster. So I'm going to be adjusting that air screw um, to get some better pickup and better idle from running just on one cylinder. Okay, let's try that. Right, so I'm going to start the bike on one cylinder now. Try and start the bike on one cylinder now. Okay, uh, I think that's picking up cleaner now. Um, as you know, so I turned the screw and it started to die a little bit, and so I backed off half a turn. Just need to get this in the ballpark to go into the dyno, so I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, now let's set up the other side. So this side is a bit of a pain because if I show you now, this on the top here is the idle adjustment screw. And this little guy down here is the air jet screw. Um, and you'll see I've put a little dot on there because it's very, very hard to tell which way you've turned it and if you've even turned it. So that's what I use. You're not going to see anything when I'm doing this because my fingers are all going to be in the way. But I'll see what that gets set to after I do this. So I'll be right back. I think that'll do. Um, just roughly set up. Now I've got to put the other spark plug back in and just reset the idles um, back to a more reasonable 1500 and that job should be done. 
That's the first time. Oh, that is sweet. I'm happy with that. So the bike has been sat now for a few hours, so it's nice and cold. What I'm gonna do is start it up, see if it starts, first time. Um, and then from there, just check the temperatures like we did before, see if they're closer to each other for the exhaust and the cylinder heads. So I'll go ahead and start it up and then we'll come back and do the cylinder head temperatures in a little bit. Fuel on, choke on. <clears throat> going to take a little while to warm it up so be back in a minute okay that's looking good and it's up to temperature now so let's uh, run the laser on it and see what the laser says yep. so let's check this pipe that's about 70 degrees now let's check this pipe. Okay, and this pipe is about 63. So that's pretty close, I would say. This cylinder head here is 45, 46. Good. Okay, so that's about 50. That's a little bit higher, but then again, this is stuck up here. The other one's out in the breeze. So I'm not worried about that. I think that's very good. Okay. I'm pretty pleased at how that's turned out for the TZR. Running the two cylinders independently is counterintuitive, but it's, it's really the only way to get things set up correctly, um, apart from taking it to a dyno, which is what I will be doing next. Um, was it easy to do? If you read my T-shirt, easy isn't worth anything. Uh, that's from Alex at Two Stroke Stuffing. Thank you very much for all your entertainment and videos over the years and inspiration for us. Um, now I've got to address one little problem on this bike that um, we've not talked about yet and we will get into that in the next video and hopefully we'll get to the point where we can take this bike on a, uh, a cafe ride to either Ace Cafe or Lumi's or Box Hill or somewhere like that. That'd be really good to get out and ride it when I'm actually enjoying riding the bike rather than riding it, trying to figure out what problems there are, what problems there are not. Um, so close, so close, really looking forward to it. Let's try and get this done uh, this year. Thanks very much, take care.